Yo, what is up guys? I'm bringing you a brand new video and welcome to the week one summary of the 700 gear score challenge where I try to get 700 gear score in under 110 days on the EU server. In this video, which is going to be probably the most hectic in the series, we're going to be jumping around really fast. It's already a long video, so I wanted to condense it down, but I'm going to show you where we started at, which is full pen to Vala and where we are now at the end of week one, which is at 4 billion silver and 274 AP with 322 DP. We have also gotten ourselves two out of the three infinite HP potion parts. We ended up getting the Blood Wolves piece at 76 pities as a raw drop, and at 31 pities we got the Shere Khan piece, and we're currently sitting at 32 Forest Roneros pieces. I don't intend to go back to Forest Roneros um, just to grind there normally, I'm going to be going there every single week to do the weekly since it seems to be the most economical way to finish it because you get that five extra pities every single week. So let's start off with everything we did starting from the beginning. And that is we started off by buying the season pass. Part of this challenge, I'm allowed to spend $60 on pearls and season passes are great for a lot of things. And it's mostly for the loot scrolls for me. So we are going to start off by... Getting that and claiming the new adventure reward, which is a penguin. And we ended up getting a little bit RNG carried here. We put up a 15% a chance at a tier 4 and it ended up succeeding. So that was pretty amazing in RNG carried. After that, we ended up getting ourselves power leveled here. We found an orcs party, which they graciously allowed me to join. They're power leveling some guildies. So I ended up getting myself a bit power leveled for the season. After that... I ended up getting part of the season pass a costume, which since I am not enhancing anything at all in this challenge, I ended up selling for raw silver. So you're welcome EU. I hope you enjoy the free costume. But after the costume, we ended up enhancing some Tuvala gloves while we were waiting. These Tuvala gloves I will eventually be transferring into Duo Begs gloves, which I know that I'm going to be needing for Dorm Morgrims a little bit later on. So we ended up making those try for the future. After that, we needed to do the season quest where you essentially kill a few monsters. So I went and did that as well. And I did the weekly at Roneros to, on my main to kill two birds with one stone. So we went ahead and we did that. And after that, we transitioned into a rift because we had to go down to Valencia in order to kill Nuver. Part of the Bartali's journal is to kill three Nuvers. And I knew that for the future I was going to need to do that. So we went all the way across the map to make it essentially to the boss. So we showed up at Nuver, We killed it. And honestly, bosses in EU are pretty pretty nice to do. I'm, I'm not going to be doing them because, you know, I don't have a lot of character slots and it is a bit of a hassle. But in EU, they die really, really fast. And you can get some pretty decent rewards. But what I was really looking for was that one kill for the log. After the Nuver. We ended up going on over to do the Berry of Infestation Week 1 quest. At this point, it was just before Wednesday, right before the reset. So we were able to go ahead and do it right before then. And we also accumulated enough money from doing the Rift as well as Roneros in order to buy our first major purchase, which was the Pen Often. If you're confused by that, I did start off with a certain amount of silver in the first video if you're just catching up. So... I did have a little bit of silver to start for, that I had been essentially doing from the Yolanakia, or not the Yolanaki, but the Sakrakia and the Valmakia season dungeon. So we ended up buying it for min price as a uh, pen often, and we turned it into a gauntlet and turned it into an axe, and that put us up to 258 AP, which is a pretty huge gain, and 11 AP gain for only 6.35 billion silver is really, really good. Despite the accuracy, I think this is a really amazing starter weapon only for succession classes, though, not for awakening. And I did buy a couple of precisions to supplement that accuracy loss. After that, the week had passed over. It's now Wednesday, just past reset. So I was able to do Barry of Infestation a second time. And Barry of Infestation, pretty easy. You know, at 258 AP, I was having no problem doing any of the like the kills and the prereqs that I had to do in full Tuvala gear it really was not a big deal. So we did the second week of it and we went on over to essentially complete our season pass a little bit further. We killed a rift boss, we got a couple of extra 
loot scrolls there. And we really are just already level 60 from that power level. So at this point, we just had to complete the season to get all those extra loot scrolls. And that was about it. Once our season was done, we ended up getting some Kaffir stone bundles, some memory fragment bundles, as well as the pet bundle. Now, in the previous clip, you saw me YOLO a pet at 15%. I don't usually recommend this. I just was feeling a little bit spicy for stream, and I just decided to go for it, and it ended up succeeding. But that was probably like the fifth or sixth time I had done that, and they all failed before that. So it's probably more economical to save up your pets if you really want Tier 4s. But uh, basically, we opened up these bundles. We got a little extra cash, and uh, overall, the season really didn't take that long. It was maybe a total of like three, four hours, and we got a lot of stuff. Of course, we got our pet. YOLO'd it, didn't succeed, but now we got a cute duck, so I guess that's good. Um, our pets are really not a you know big deal. I'm, I'm not looted, killing fast enough where it's really going to matter right now. But after we did that, we went ahead and we did the Magnus. The Magnus gave me a pen boss gear, which I took, as well as a value pack, which is going to be helpful for 15 days. So Magnus is super, super clutch. It's also going to give you the universal storage, so it's very nice. And after the Magnus, we went ahead and we went to Jatina and got ourselves some Tet Ergon shoes. We traded in our Pen uh, Tuvala boots for the Ergons because they give more DR. And then after that, we went and did some Blood Wolves. But while we were doing Blood Wolves, every time it was nighttime, I then would go to Shere Khan. And I used a little trick where I was on my alt and popped some towers. And then I would hop to my main to kill. This is a really good strategy because I didn't have a high energy pool, so make sure to park some alts out here if you're going to do this. But Shere Khan Knight is super good. I did Shere Khan every night I could. I also took advantage of a sale. There was a 20% discount coupon, uh, a couple of them that they had given us from Silver Deals. So I went ahead and I bought those for the extra loot scrolls, and that gives me enough loot scrolls um, to essentially hopefully complete this series without running out. Also, I still have 3,000 pearls left for maybe a future season if there is another one. But I went ahead and I just started farming Blood Wolves like a madman. The season was done. I had my weeklies completed at Ronaros. And uh, they also got this little Santa event here. So you can get these little red Christmas presents. And they're really good. You know, 50 million silver just for farming is pretty solid. But uh, we just kind of, we hit Blood Wolves hard. We got a lot of Eye of the Ruins rings, which is really good. We're just kind of stacking up our money. We also got a Marnie's Research Box, which these got buffed. They're only one-time use now, but they're really, really good. You'll see later on how much money I got out of the, all of the boxes that I got. But we basically farmed Blood Wolves all the way up to 76 total pities before we ultimately got the drop. But uh, along the way, we did get tons of money and tons of Eye of the Ruins rings, which you'll see what my next purchase was a little bit later on in the video. So after some Blood Wolves, we went over and we completed Deeves Encyclopedia. I already had purchased all these items off the market. I put all the orders. There's tons of like lists of items out there. I suggest you check them out and buy the stuff too. I bought everything. I also went and did a little bit of the Dorum Morgrims as well. Dorum Morgrim has a lot of drop rate bonuses. You turn in some, some duo green armors and some duo green weapons and you get drop rate. So that's what I was utilizing. So I went over there just so I could have those ready to go. And it seemed to be working because I was getting some more drops over here at Blood Wolves. Got a Spectres, got some Eye of the Ruins rings, and we're really just stacking up money. Another Marnie's box, which I will not complain about. I ended up getting like five of these things throughout the entire time that I was here. I didn't end up completing them all. But after a Blood Wolf grind, I turned in my Tuvala helmet for a Tet uh, Griffin, because I realized it has some more DR on the Griffin. I also realized you can get some loot scrolls from the progression pass. So I went ahead and I found that I got five loot scrolls for doing some PvE challenges and then 10 advanced for doing a few more. So then I went over to Kratuga. Kratuga is a really good grind spot at my gear, which at this point was like 261 AP after I'd done some journals. I made sure to take advantage of any Nuva spawns that happened, and then I went ahead and enhanced my first Pry Jatina from doing the daily quest, which I made sure to do every day. And after that, it was black. It was back to Blood Wolves, where I got another red present, opened it up, and boom, golden Christmas tree, free 100 mil. Thank you very much. 
I will go on my merry day and continue to collect all these Eye of the Ruins rings. Blood Wolves ended up being some pretty solid money. You know, overall, I, I got quite a bit of money, especially with this, this Christmas event with uh, the red things. I also got five loot scrolls out of it too, which was a huge surprise. I didn't even know that was an option. So got some more Eye of the Ruins rings. And some more Eye of the Ruins rings. After that, it was Node War Day, so we ended up going to the Node War Shop. I buy Node War Shop as much as I can. I buy the two boxes, which usually give you some hards and dust, and then back to more Blood Wolves. And then finally, Yash Moon Cagtanak dropped when we were at 76 pity pieces. It was a little bit bittersweet. I was enjoying the heck out of this place, but it's over and we can move on to some Kratuga. At this point, I did Kratuga to collect the first time completion reward of killing 3,500 mobs. And then I went on over to do a Fugar quest here where I exchange over my old begs into some, you know, regular begs, which then allows me to complete part two of Dora Morgrims. And I ended up getting a Tet begs on a 3.2% chance as I was trying to fail. So we ended up failing it down to duo again after that. And then we went over to Dora Morgrim and we gave the gloves on over there. And then... We went to Shere Khan for a nighttime, and we ended up getting that drop the same exact day. And after that, I had a little bit of time left on my, my drop rate, so I went over to Ronaros, tried my hand at a little bit of Ronaros on Arsha, ended up running into an individual whom I swiftly killed. And I'm definitely not including this in the video because after this video, he killed me like four times in a row and ultimately took the spot. But I killed him the first time, so that's all that matters. Uh, after that, after I drained the rest of that, I went on over to do Cliffs Enhancing. So there's this new thing you can do, or not new, but as a new player, you can enhance Cliffs weapons. And it's a really easy quest. It's like from the Black Spirit. You go over to Western Guard Camp. You get these things up to Tet, and then you're able to exchange them over at the little blacksmith dude here in Western Guard Camp, and you exchange them and you get 700 million silver per tet. So I ended up getting 2.1 billion silver essentially for free. Only new players can do this. I think you have to, it said something about like 770 hours played or under 30 days playtime or something like that. So after that, we went to do the combination of the two pieces of the pity or of the, uh, the potion that we got. So we combine those up, and now we have the tier 2 pot. So that means we are basically, you know, for the most part, done with the pot, and we can just do the weekly, and that's about it. We also exchanged our Blood Wolf Marnie Stones. We ended up filling up three of those. And the money is pretty freaking solid. We ended up getting a Pry Tungrad, a Pry Voltara, and a Pry Tungrad Ring, which is the lowest drops. We also took some Shikatu seals that we had from Attendance Rewards, and we got ourselves some gold bar boxes. And we ended up getting a few hundred million silver from those, which is a pretty nice little boost. And that allowed us to buy our Tet Tungrad belt. So that was our first big gain. And then from there, we went to go do some more journals. This is the Fugar journal. And we had some help from a trusty sailor named Jeffries. And once we got done with the Fugar journal, we also went and enhanced our duo crescent from Jatina while we were waiting for a boat to essentially come to us because we had to transport it. But once we completed Fugars, we then collected one extra DP from that book. It really didn't take too long to do. And then from there, we went to Jatina and we traded in our regular Kudum, uh, our regular Tuvala offhand to a Kudum. So that way there, we could get it up to reform level one and then reform level two. The reason why is at this point with the Tungrad belt, we were sitting at 268 AP. And all we really needed to get into Sakraya, which is our end game goal here, is we needed 269. So we've got our infinite pot. We have now got our Kudum up to reform level two. And boom, 269 AP. We also took a little bit of a detour to get power leveled here at the Rhinos. This literally took 10 minutes. But the reason that we we're getting power leveled here is because 
there is a 1 DP costume that you get for hitting Professional 1, and you can use an equipment tailoring coupon, which then allows you to get 1 DP when wearing that costume. And we're going to need that as well as fall damage reduction. So it took like 10 minutes. We got Professional Hunting, and then we take an equipment tailoring coupon, and we're able to basically collect it from our rewards tab, like so. Come on, collect it. There we go. All right, collected that. And then we grab our equipment tailoring coupon, and it's basically going to be the freest 1 DP you can possibly get. But the 50% fall damage reduction is really strong. It even works on horses. You you Basically, if you have this on while riding a horse and you jump off a cliff with your horse, it'll take 50% reduced damage with this on, as well as giving one sheet DP. So now we're officially up to 269, 319, and that is enough to start doing Sakraya. But first, we did the Yolanaki solo mode. This is new, and there are first-time rewards for completing it. It gave you stuff like a Vaha's Dawn all the time, as well as some chests, which can give you RNG all the way up to, like, duo Vaha's if you're lucky. In my chests, I ended up opening, and I got a Narc Earring, which is a Pry. So that's pretty good. And then I ended up getting a base Voltara. So unfortunate, not the greatest, but I did get four Vahas, so ended up taking about a little over two hours. I also got some uh, crystals as well for doing this, which are worth, you know, a little bit of money. I got it corrupted, so it ended up being a little, you know, right around 100 million silver for that, which was okay. After that, we were able to go to Sakraya. We got ourselves our first ever Red Shard, and this is honestly a huge point. Because Sakraya is really, really good money with a blue loot scroll. So the fact that I could grind here, and it was happy to see me too. Because I was getting red shards left and right down here, man. I was getting some really, really good money. And I'm really enjoying the grind so far. So this is just a little montage of all the little red shards that I've gotten along the way. I haven't really put too many hours down here yet. But the red shards were just a dropping like crazy. But uh, after that, I also experienced one of my first Node Wars. If you guys are looking for a Node War guild, Sephiric Dragons, they've done a really good job in keeping the Node War shop open, and it's super, super helpful to get 50 Kafras for only 50 mil pretty much every day. So I attended the Node War a little bit here. I came a little bit late, but we ended up uh, defeating that fort and getting the Tier 4 shop. And the Tier 4 shop allowed me to buy... The 50 Kafras, as well as three of these box of spoils, which is for a little extra dust, and the loot scroll, which is super huge for me. After we did that, we ended up going and collecting our new cloud ring. So at this point, it is after patch. It's Wednesday. So we collected our cloud ring, which just came out. It should be in your rewards tab. So we got a free 1 AP. And that is putting us up to 270, which feels pretty good, man. And I am going to be eventually leveling this up to a higher level so that I can get it up to 17 AP. So, but that's for the future. While I was here, did a little bit of Kratuga killing, got myself a nice little Layton, and then I went and did Quint. Quint is required for the Bartali log. I then went ahead and completed essentially the rest of the Bartali log. I had to kill one more Nuver, and I did that and basically got all the stats from Bartali in all in one afternoon. It really wasn't too bad, and I ended up getting a Nuver sealed sub-weapon box on my last kill, so it was a nice little parting gift. Probably not going to be back to any sort of world bosses at all until the end of this series. So once Nuver was dead, we also did a little bit of progression pass stuff. Uh, we're still working towards that, and we got five Supreme Scrolls from that, which is a pretty feels-good moment. We then, while we were here, did our third week now, as we did... Uh, you know, we started week one, week two, and now this is week three of the Barrier of Infestation, which gave me one sheet DP. And with that Bartali log completed, we we're up to 274 AP, as well as our DP went up because of Bartali, as well as that, that log that we just did there. We then went and did our Ronaros weekly as well to cap off the week. And that gave us an additional five hitty pieces. So we went ahead and we did that. We ended up getting, I think, three during that hour. So we're up to a total of 32 now. And after that, we ended up basically 
basically that's it. That that was that was the week in a summary. We did a lot of work. We are pretty much done every single adventure journal. Uh partway through that as well, I did do the main quest line of Odalita and o and uh, comma Sylvia and I claimed the 1 AP from Marindora as well as the 1 AP from the main chick in the library, but I guess it wasn't interesting enough for me to clip. I'm using Shadow Play to clip all the interesting moments. Um, so I'm trying to recall everything that I did um, just through those clips. But yeah, realistically, we just put in a lot of time. And we did end up playing much more than the six hours a day that I think that this challenge is going to take to complete. But it is the first week, and I did want to, you know, create a little bit of hype moment in streaming longer hours so that you guys could see it if you guys want to watch this live i do a lot of everything like almost everything on stream twitch.tv slash choice but yeah guys we are pretty much at the end of this video i know it was a long one today future videos are probably not going to be this long but the first week is really really crazy because there's so many different moving parts of things that you're going to be doing but there it is four billion silver 274 AP, 322 DP. At this point in time, we need to gain one gear score per day to finish this challenge as we close out what I guess I would consider the eighth day since we're at about seven and a half uh, plus. Obviously, I took time to put together this video, so I actually lost quite a bit of grind time here. So I got to get back to the grind, guys. And I will see you guys all next week on YouTube or perhaps in the next stream if you guys catch me live. I am not going to be making as much progress this next week compared to last because it is Christmas time. It's my dad's birthday and I have a lot of family that I visit here for Christmas. So uh, progress for next week is going to be pretty slow. But the week after that, we're going to be going hard. So hope you look forward to that. I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. Thank you guys all very much for watching. If you guys are enjoying, make sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace.